Hi guys, it's Christy, and today I thought I'd show you how to paint a World War II British Commando. Now, the only reason I haven't really covered these guys before is because pretty much all British uniforms are pretty similar to one another, and I've already done a normal sort of British infantryman, and I've done a British paratrooper as well, and the British paratroopers really are very similar, particularly to the commandos in terms of equipment and dress. But that tutorial is getting pretty old now, so I thought it might be good to do something kind of similar with an uh, updated uh, resolution camera and just, you know, a slightly maybe refined paint style since when I first did that particular tutorial. Now, the model I'm using here today is from Warlord Games. This guy is from a character pack that they make, and this is um, uh, Lord Lovett, who is a very famous British commando, or maybe I should say, I don't know if he was very famous or, uh, very, or famously eccentric. Uh, he had, there's all sorts of crazy stories about this guy that he had his own personal piper who he brought with him into combat to play the bagpipes and, you know, other kind of kooky stuff like that. So he certainly got a reputation. Now, despite though being a sort of character figure there, you, he's still wearing pretty uh, generic, uh, a sort of pretty generic uniform and has pretty generic equipment. So he should be useful for, you know, whatever uh, commando model you need to paint. And of course, the added bonus that he, for him being a character is that he also has an extra fine, well-sculpted face, which I think makes the model nicer and is, for me, just a lot more, you know, fun and rewarding to paint. So as usual, I'm going to be starting out here with all the paints that you're going to need for this model. Uh, hopefully you can read all of the names on the bottle here. Uh, lots of greens and browns, as you would expect from this type of uniform. I'm going to start off by working on Lord Lovett's uniform. It's sort of the standard thing or a variant of that most uh, British soldiers wore. So my base coat here is going to be a mixture of Vallejo English uniform and some Vallejo leather brown just because I want to, you know, get a slightly darker base that I'm then going to build up a little bit. For my next highlight, I just move straight on up to pure English uniform, and I'm going to go ahead and just kind of build that up on uh, areas where I want there to be a little bit more highlight. Uh, this model is fairly delicately proportioned with a lot of uh, small detail sculpting, so even on the uniform, you're probably going to find it's helpful to use a number zero brush for this work. I continued highlighting here by taking some Vallejo khaki and adding that into the English uniform and I'm just continuing to build things up. I wanted a really nice kind of dark, very subtle uh, highlight kind of scheme on this uniform and I actually, compared to some of the things I paint, I think this actually came out fairly subdued but I really kind of like the result.
finished with a series of kind of bright edge highlights where I mixed a, a little bit of Vallejo Buff into the color that I was using for the last step. So that was the khaki with the English uniform, and I basically just lightened a little bit. Uh, buff is one option for lightening this, though you could also use Iraqi sand if you want a sort of maybe slightly warmer, browner tone that's a little bit uh, less yellow. Buff obviously gives it a more yellow cast. Uh, but the nice thing is there was quite a bit of variance in sort of the color of the fabric in these uniforms. So, you know, you can, you can mix it up and, you know, paint uh, different figures in your unit using even different colors uh, just to make things a little bit uh, more interesting. One thing the commandos were really known for was this special extra large type of backpack that they carried called a Bergen pack. Uh, just because they were operating independently a lot behind enemy lines, they really just needed a way to carry a lot more equipment. Uh, and these Bergen packs usually appear to be sort of this khaki green color, I guess. Uh, the base coat I'm using on it here is going to be a mixture of the black, green, and some reflective green. And you can see I'm just going to be building that up. Actually, the other elements of his equipment are, as far as I can tell, also in a similar color. So his like sort of canteen and also that satchel he's carrying to one side. I'm then going to apply a really subtle first highlight, which is just pure reflective green. Uh, you don't have to be too neat about this because all of the green... Um, bits, the backpack and the satchel and stuff, they're all going to get this sort of lighter khaki piping on them. So, you know, you, you, you know that's going to hide a lot of sort of mistakes or sloppiness with the green. I then added another really subtle highlight, which was the reflective green with some German field gray World War II mixed into it. I think on reflection, you could choose to either admit omit this step or the last step so you could do one or the other uh, and I don't think it would make very much difference to the final product. However the last highlight it is pretty important because uh, the green as far as I can tell on these Bergen packs was often a fairly light faded green so uh, you know you need to lighten up a little bit more. Uh, I took my mixture of the reflective green and the German field gray World War II and I just went ahead and used some deck tan here also from Vallejo to sort of lighten it up and I'm building that up particularly strongly on sort of the top areas where I want a lot of light to hit. Uh, I actually recommend you probably want to make just two mixes of this so start out with one with a bit of deck tan added and then once you've applied that and kind of blended it out you want to go back in with a stronger mix with the deck tan you can really use that kind of as an edge highlight and on any really sort of sharp wrinkles or folds in the backpack. And one really nice thing about painting the commandos is even though it seems like they have tons and tons of equipment they're carrying and that can feel uh, daunting at first, most of the equipment is all the same color. So that, that makes it a lot easier than you think when you're starting out. And basically, almost everything we have left in terms of equipment to paint on this model is going to be that sort of uh, British sort of uniform tan. I, actually, I don't know what the official color name is, but it's a very sort of light pale um, tan khaki color uh, and it's going to need to be applied to sort of all the belts and straps and stuff and equipment holding stuff and all of the Bergen packs and stuff have a lot of have this sort of the edges and borders and straps are made out of that material and all the piping and everything uh, so you know that's nice that you're all doing it with one color it is a little bit time consuming though especially on this base coat because there's just so many areas that you need to paint a lot of them are very thin and you need to paint them carefully and precisely uh, so you don't mess up uh, you know some of the work that you've already done uh, the base coat i'm using on all this uh th this equipment canvas is um just some vallejo uh, khaki and it's kind of weird I know right now because 
this base. With this base coat applied, it's gonna look a whole bunch just like sort of almost like the normal uniform in places, but don't worry, we're gonna highlight it a lot more and you'll definitely see a difference when we're finished. For my first highlight on all the areas of equipment canvas, I'm just gonna take some buff and mix it into my khaki. And already you can see there's a lot more definition now between these areas and the uniform. So like I said, there wasn't really anything to worry about here. Uh, for the most part, you're gonna be dealing with a lot of finished polyfin and straps. So there's not too much blending to do. There's just a few areas where you're gonna to wanna to be a little bit more careful, like on his holster and on his sort of his leg wraps, his spats, whatever you wanna call them. Those are gonna you're wanting you're gonna be a little want to paint a little bit more subtly there and spend a little bit more time kind of blending out your colors. I'm going to continue highlighting even further now by mixing some Vallejo Ivory into the highlight I had from last step, so the khaki combined with the buff. Uh, I didn't add very much ivory at first, but you can see it definitely makes a difference. The whole thing gets a little bit lighter. Uh, you can make some choices here because there is, as far as I can tell, a pretty big range in, in how this material looked, so you'll see uh, some pieces of equipment where this color is going to be a lot darker and more yellow and then you're going to see some where it's very very light actually almost white sometimes uh, so depending on sort of your preference you could kind of stop after this highlight step if you feel like it's light enough or you can be like me and just continue on and make it even brighter And for my final highlight, I really just took some pure Vallejo Ivory and I just darkened it ever so slightly with some buff. Uh, and I, my preference here is to go for a very light variant of the equipment canvas, this almost white one, just because I like that there is really a lot of contrast between it and the rest of the uniform. Uh, and I, I prefer it to leave it in the more sort of darker muted yellow tone. I feel like it blends in a little too much with the uniform and this makes it just stand out a little better. Uh, while I think you can go really heavy with this high highlight, on, especially on the trim and piping and small straps, you want to be a little bit more careful when you're applying it to things uh, like the um, holster and his you know, leg wraps because those are larger areas and that light color t tends to be a little bit too in your face if you put too much of it on. So I did apply it to those areas, but I applied it a lot more thinly and I really tried to blend it out a lot more and it just I just kept tried to keep the effect a little bit more subtle. And then I really went hard on this, just all the other thin sort of stripey detail areas. Now the next thing I'm going to be doing is painting his sweater, which he has on underneath his uniform jacket. Now, a lot of pictures you'll see commandos wore sort of a rib sweater that was sort of a dark brown, a similar color to their uniform, but Lord Lava is famously known to have worn sort of a white cable knit sweater uh, underneath his uniform, uh, especially when he landed on the beaches at D-Day. So that's what I'm doing here. And there's really very little showing. So I just base coated it with sort of a dark brown, leather Leather brown is fine. I then went back over it with Vallejo buff and I finally took the Vallejo ivory and used it to very carefully pick out and highlight the tops of the sort of the, of the uh, cable knit, I guess. Uh, again, not a lot of, of this is showing, so you shouldn't need to really spend a lot of time on it. The other thing I did in this step was a little bit of his collar of his uniform blouse is sticking out and I went ahead and painted that. And that's again something you see in a lot of different shades in an English uniform. Sometimes it's a brown, sometimes it's really a green. Uh, I opted for a very light khaki shade here because I wanted something that looked a little bit different from the rest of the uniform. So I base coated it with khaki like everything else to start, but then I highlighted it using uh, Vallejo Iraqi sand uh, followed by a little bit of Iraqi sand and ivory mix so that I went for a really very light sort of tan flashy shade <laughs> but you do definitely want to finish with a lot of ivory because if you don't you might end up have it look <laughs> too much like skin and that's definitely not something you want when it's really right next to his neck and face. 
Now he's also carrying a bedroll with him, uh, and I frankly wasn't completely sure on what color to make the bedroll, but I looked around a little bit and I kind of decided to opt for kind of just a green type of military green type blanket. I wanted it to come out a little bit different from the Bergen pack though, uh, but I started out the same way. So I base coated it using the black green. I then highlighted it with first with a mixture of the black and the reflective green, uh, followed by pure reflective green. And then to get a lighter highlight, I mixed in some of the deck tan again. Uh, but I tried not to highlight as extensively as I had the Bergen pack. So I wanted, I kept the whole thing darker. So my highest highlight with a deck tan was still uh, pretty subtle so you'll see that sort of the end result is the whole thing overall kind of just comes off as sort of a just darker green color. Now for the leather areas on the model which basically include his boots and a little sort of knife that he's got tied to one leg. Uh, now, normally, as I understand it, the boots worn by sort of your average enlisted uh, British soldier would have been black, but officers were an exception and they often wore brown boots. Uh, so that's what I'm doing here because he's definitely an officer. Uh, I uh, base coated everything here using uh, Vallejo German Camouflage Black Brown, and then I applied a first highlight of Vallejo Leather Brown. Uh, and now normally I might have pulled out another color of paint to highlight my leather further, but I really wanted to keep my palette limited, so instead I kind of tried to work with what I had. So I took my leather brown and I lightened it first with a little bit of the Iraqi sand, uh, and I used that to build up some lighter uh, colors on the boots and the scabbard of the knife, and then I finished by getting uh, some even brighter highlights and also getting sort of a little bit of that yellow tone which we've already got going on with the uniform and the straps in there by taking and mixing a little bit of buff uh, into my brightest highlights which I applied to areas uh, like the toes and the heels and things like that. Next, I did the wooden part of his rifle. Uh, I base coated this with the leather brown, and then I made a first highlight by mixing the leather brown with some Vallejo red brown. Uh, and then I continued to highlight it with some pure uh, red brown. And then I made a final highlight by mixing some of my buff into uh, the red brown and applying that sort of carefully and lightly, particularly along the edges and all of those kind of places. So really, mostly as an edge highlight. Um, Lord Lovett was known for carrying a very specific uh, model of gun, uh, but honestly, I, I was actually a little bit confused by exactly which one he's supposed to be carrying this model. I looked uh, up the ones that he was famous for, and they did neither of them really look like this, so I'm not ex exactly sure. So I kind of winged it a little bit with what areas here I painted wood and which ones I painted metal, so hopefully it's right. But even if it's not, hopefully this should at least give you the general idea about, you know, how to go about painting whatever kind of gun he's carrying. Now I'm going to be painting some metal areas on the model, and that's largely just bits of his gun. But he's also got some like, you know, little buttons and clips and stuff on parts of his equipment. And I just went ahead and did those in the same metal shade. I made a base coat here by mixing black with some Vallejo Air gun metal uh, first and just carefully dotting it on all those areas where I thought I needed it. And then I just went back in and highlighted with a thin layer of pure gun metal. Uh, the, the, the metal areas on this model are fairly small and sparse, so I didn't really feel a need to make sort of more highlight layers uh, for the metal. When I was done, and since I already had the black paint out, I also went in and very carefully painted the thin black band around the bottom of his beret, which should just kind of be black leather. And I highlighted it just real quick with a very thin line of black mixed with a little bit of deck tan. Now the very last thing, of course, and one of the sort of distinctive features here for a commando is the beret. I saved it to last because it is on top of his head, and if I had painted it sooner, it almost certainly would have gotten damaged. The base coat here I'm using is the Leo Black Green that I already used on some other areas of the model. Now to highlight the beret, I really needed to get a slightly more brilliant, slightly less natural shade of green than on the equipment. So my first layer here is a mixture of the black green 
uh, with some deep green, which is a really nice bright jewel light color. And after I built that up, I then went in with uh, pure deep green and I applied several layers till I got a really good kind of brilliant looking kind of saturated color. And then for areas just to get really an extra nice bright highlight in some places, I mixed a bit of buff into my deep green and just kind of really tried to blend that out. I didn't want to put, I didn't put it on too strong because it would have kind of faded the green out. But at the same time, I really wanted to be careful here not to make the green too light. It's still a pretty dark shade. And I know on my um, uh, airborne figure that I painted with his red bright, I caught a little bit of flack for highlighting it too strongly and making it too bright red. Uh, so I was I was being really careful here to keep the overall effect here toned down. I'm, I'm, and I feel pretty confident the color I got here is not too far away from sort of a more natural look for this particular piece of headgear. Okay, so here is the completed uh, Lord Lovett commando figure. I have to admit, when I first picked him out, I was a little bit daunted just by the sheer amount of stuff that he was carrying. But after I spent a little of time doing research and realized that really most of the things on this uniform are painted all in the same color, uh, I felt uh, a lot better about it. And it actually went really quite fast. It, it's not nearly a co as complex a figure uh, as it looks. Now, one thing I didn't do here that you will want to keep in mind probably for most of your commandos is that they tend to have insignia and patches which they wear on both of their uh, arms, both of their shoulders, these sort of very dark blue and red insignia patches. Uh, and they're reasonably intricate things. Uh, now, I did not put them on Lord Lovett because historically in the photos you see of him, he did not wear those on his uniform. So I guess I kind of got a get out of jail free card here. I kind of avoided doing some extra work, but you know, uh, it shouldn't be too big a deal to add them, and I assume that maybe well, a lot of models where they should be there, they'd be sculpted into, which would make it a little bit easier. Uh, the other thing I admitted that you might want to have is the commandos sort of often wore like a silver kind of pin on the front of their beret. Uh, again, that wasn't really sculpted on here. And because of that, it's a big enough thing that I didn't really want to try to make it up because I think without the sculpting, it would look a little bit strange. So it's possible they didn't always wear them. I'm not really quite sure about that. But anyway, you know, I think the overall result here is good. And I think I'm hoping that, you know, what I did here, this should pretty much be applicable for the majority of sort of standard enlisted commandos or whatever, even though this particular guy is a character and an eccentric and everything what he's wearing is very multi-purpose. So, uh, as always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and share it, of course. Uh, leave me comments with what you thought, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you can keep up with all my latest insanity and madness and updates. Uh, so that's all for now, and I will see you next time.